Okay. Hi, hi again. In this session, particularly, it, it, the, the, the series is about empowering creativity through artificial intelligence. And I'll, I'll specifically be sort of think, looking at creative ways we can use AI as opposed to the kind of some of the more standard uh, things we can do with it. Uh, I'll be focusing during the session on, on chat GPT. Um, particularly as you know I don't want to tread on Russell's toes who will become be coming later and be doing specifically sort of a range of tools and things like that although a lot of the things that I show you will work in other chatbots so if you're a user of Bard or Gemini or, or one of the other ones that are, uh, are sprouting up all over the place the prompts that I show you should still work um, just a bit of background. Yes, that, that's a picture of me just to prove, you know, there we are. We're the same person. We look alike. Um, pictures of my two innovations awards, just to prove some credibility there. And um, this is my latest book, ChatGPT in the Language Classroom. And I've also developed a course for teachers to do on AI tools for the English Language Classroom. Um, here you can see some icons to, which are links to my social media. So if you want to sort of follow up and see some of the other things that I do um, later, by all means, grab my presentation. And if you just click on these icons, they'll take you to the different um, social media platforms. At the end of the session, I'll give you a link and a QR code so you can um, access all of the slides. And when you access them, they'll be completely interactive as the uh, as you're seeing in this presentation. There won't be any changes. It's exactly as I use them. So uh, feel free to do that and come back later. OK, so I'll uh, start with a quick question for you. How have you used AI with your students? I'd um, just like to find out a bit before I get started to see what the, what the experience is in the room and so that I can sort of uh, address the, 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 the talk to the kinds of levels of people that we have sharing. If you, share the, if you scan this QR code on the screen with your phone, you'll see a little questionnaire and you can type in there. Please use the, the questionnaire and the, the link because then we can all see it rather than there being a huge stream of messages coming through chat, um, which disappear quite quickly. I'll just grab the link to that as well. It's a quick, just a little Mentimeter questionnaire. You can type in your response there and then click on submit and we'll all be able to see those. So just scan that and, and uh, put, your, put your replies in there. And I'll have a quick, a quick sip of tea to warm up a little bit. It's quite cold here. Okay, so now if we go to my Mentimeter responses, I should be able to see some of your responses. Let's see what's coming through. Uh, not Some people not yet too scared. Don't worry, nothing to be scared of. I'll show you a few things you can get started with. Haven't used it yet to create posts for RRSS. Not sure what RRSS is. Not yet, never used it, not used. Yes, I have. Chat PT for error correction tasks on specific grammar points. Well, that's quite brave getting it to, to do error correction tasks. That's great. I'll just refresh this. If I come back and go, a few others might have appeared. There's the QR code again if you've missed it, but I have also put the link into chat if you want to reply there. Okay, lots more coming now. Creating dialogues and activities, yeah. Tickles, randomized words for a story. Oh, that's a nice idea. Creation of classroom materials. Lots of few people using Twee. Great, great, good, good. Okay, that's great. So we have sort of mixture of experience and uh, hopefully there'll be something for everyone in this talk. Um, that's, that's the aim at least. Um, my, my first interaction with, with AI was actually quite a long time ago. I know um, OpenAI and ChatGPT came on, came, became available you know, just last, last year, or the year before last now, in, the, in November of 23. Yeah, 
November of 23? No, November of 22. And um, I'm getting my years mixed up. And uh, but and it's made quite a big, big impact on teaching, which is great. And, you know, it's great to see how many teachers have really embraced it. But AI has been around for quite a long time in various different forms. And uh, my first interaction with it was actually back in, um, it was in Morocco. I was teaching a group of students in Rabat in Morocco for the British Council in 2002, 2003 sort of time, about 20 years ago, shows how old I am. And um, I had a group of uh, young teenage students who were about 11, 12, and they had a good level of English, and um, but they wouldn't practice their English together because they felt very self-conscious about it. They were at that kind of difficult age and they didn't really want to speak English to each other because it felt stupid because, you know, they shared a, a first language anyway. Um, so I looked around for ways that they could practice and develop their fluency a little more. And at the time, you know, chat rooms were very popular. So I went to a chat room to sort of see if I could find some a safe chat room where they could sort of interact with people. You know, and uh, what I discovered was apart from, you know, the safety issues, um, a lot of the conversations that were going on in the chat room weren't particularly good conversations. You know, I didn't see, you know, lots of people having interesting discussions, you know, most of it was, you know, hey, dude, what's up? What's the weather like? Or, or you know, where are you? Are you male or female? Or how old are you? And that was about the limit of the conversation. And that, so that was a bit disappointing. So I looked around for some other things. And at, at the time I was quite lucky, there was a film that had just been released by Steven Spielberg called AI. And it, it's a really interesting film if you ever get the chance to see it, uh, do. And um, it's based on the story of Pinocchio. And, you know, as we know in the, in the story of Pinocchio, Pinocchio wants to be a real live boy, but it, this is a kind of futuristic version. And, um, the, the Pinocchio character is an android boy who's adopted by a family and um, because their son is in a coma. And the boy wants to be loved by his mother. He wants people to feel that he's real, you know. Um, and that it brings up a lot of interesting ethical issues to do with AI and robotics and things like that. So it's, it's well worth having a, a look if you get the chance. Um, but the, the important part of it for me in terms of teaching was that they had a, a website to promote the film. And on the website, there was a bot, uh, just a, a simple little chat bot window uh, where, where you could go and chat to the character in the film, the Pinocchio character, if you like, and ask questions. And so I gave this a try and thought it was interesting. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for my students to practice their English. And so I gave them a link. We went to the uh, computer room and they, they spent about an, half an hour sort of asking questions and interacting with this bot. Um, and they really enjoyed it, you know. And there was some of the things that they, they enjoyed. Ooh, it's the wrong, wrong link. Some of the things that they really enjoyed was, you know, it would answer any questions that they asked it. You know, they could ask it about anything. They, they asked it about love and about feelings and about politics and about art and how it perceived the world. And it would answer all of these questions. It didn't get bored or impatient like, you know, people do or teachers do for that matter. And it had no kind of ego or self-consciousness. So it wasn't you know, it wasn't inhibited about the honesty of the answers that it gave. And they found this, this really kind of interesting as well. The problem was that, you know, at that point, it had quite a short attention span. So that if they would ask it a question and it would answer them, but if they tried to follow up that question by referencing something within the answer, it, it didn't understand. It had completely forgotten. So it was like having a discussion with a goldfish, if you like. It had a two-second memory span. And, and as soon as they tried to follow up or go into deeper discussions, you know, it was totally lost. And that's one of the that was one of the most striking things that, that I noticed when I started using ChatGPT is that you could talk to it genuinely like a, a human being and and it would remember and you could reference back to things in the conversation and it didn't get lost. In fact, ChatGPT can 
contract up to about 4,000 words back and without getting lost, which is probably mo most the more, pe more than most people can do, you know. Um, certainly, uh, I think that's true of myself now. Um, so it had this kind of long attention span. So it could follow these long conversational threads it now nowadays it can also instigate response so it isn't dependent on you asking questions you know it can start to ask you questions if it's programmed to do that you can program it to do specific things as well and do specific tasks and when i say program it it doesn't mean you have to learn a kind of programming language or like uh, javascript or or html you can just program it writing out a list of instructions in your first language whether that's english or whatever it is as long as it's one of the ones that uh, the the bot understands so you can write these kind of programs computer programs some of which i'll show you and it can also be used to power other apps which is becoming uh, more more common and and i'm sure russell will show you a few apps that are probably powered by chat gpt so you know it, it does enable able us to build other apps based on its platform which is pretty remarkable you know uh, for for something that's being offered free um when I show you some of the examples of things that I've been experimenting with it, um, I am using the free version of ChatGPT. It isn't a paid version, so you can all, all do the same things. Although I do pay for a version because I don't want to come and do training and not have access because it's too busy or something like that. If you want to delve into some of the, the depths of, of how artificial intelligence work and how large language models and machine learning work, I have created a little video here, which you can watch later if you want to. Um, the video is narrated by, uh, by this woman here, and her, she is in fact uh, an AI I bot, which has got a synthetic voice. To create this video, I got chat GPT to write the script. And then I put it into a program called HeyGen. And, this, and that created this avatar and the voice. And she can sort of read the script to you. I chose her accent and I chose her appearance. And just, just to give you a quick listen to what she said. The learning like process here. involves training the system with a large amount of data, often referred to as a training data set. This represents examples of the task or problem that the so there you go. Have a listen to that later and, and see what you think in terms of how realistic you think the voice and appearance are. But it's I, I find that quite remarkable and quite kind of cheap and easy to do as well. So, you know, that took me about, I think, 20 minutes to create that video from sort of having the idea for the script to exporting the finished video. And, you know, a few years ago, that would have taken me uh, probably most of the day. So there's sort of huge time savings there. Okay, so I'll start by having a look, few look, a look at a few things that we can use it for as a teacher. And the first thing that, you know, one thing that we all have to do is plan lessons. Maybe you're really experienced and you don't need to plan anymore. You can just uh, walk into the classroom and do it without planning. But ChatGPT is a very good tool for planning a lesson. If you're sitting there with a blank of sheet, sheet of paper, you don't have a course book, you, you have a group of students very soon and you need a lesson plan, it can actually produce something for you. Um, what I've done in the presentation is I've, I've given you what's called prompts, which is what you put into chat GPT to make it respond and produce things for you. And these are prompt templates, which you can edit with your own content. And I've put in some edited examples. So this is a lesson planning prompt for chat GPT. So it says act as ESL teacher GPT. This, and then you write in the time, in minutes, how many, how long you want your lesson plan to be. And then you tell it the level of your students, the aim of the lesson, and you can even suggest a type of approach. So here is an example I've got. Act as ESL teacher GPT, write a 60 minute lesson plan to teach EL stu ESL students at Common European Framework of Reference level two about narrative tenses using a test teach test approach. So if you had to write that lesson plan, how long do you think it would take you? Just quickly type into um, type into chat. How long do you think it would take you to write that 60-minute lesson plan? 
and I'll go to ChatGPT and I'll show you how long ChatGPT takes. So here we are, ChatGPT. I'll boost the size a bit so you can see a bit better. I'm just typing in my prompt and click on send a message. And now it's writing my lesson plan for me. Okay, and I think it's finished. There it is finished in about 30 seconds. So here it is, lesson plan, teaching narrative tenses, objective, by the end of the lesson, students will be able to correctly use past simple, past continuous, past perfect tense for narrating stories. It's set out what materials I need, duration of the lesson. It's given me a warm up activity. It's given me a test, an initial test activity, then my teach activity, some guided practice, test again, homework suggestions, and a conclusion. So all of that done in just a few seconds. Okay, it might not be the best lesson plan. You might be able to write a different one, a, a better one, but it is something to start from. And it gives you, especially if you're inexperienced, it gives you something as a basis to work from and improve and, and saves you looking at a blank sheet of paper. So that's you know, a really great way of producing lesson plans very quickly. If, for example, you're involved in teacher training and you want examples of different lesson plans that show different approaches, you can ask it to just to change the approach and rewrite the lesson plan using a different approach, which I'll do now. So I've asked it to change it to a task-based learning approach. And there you go. Just in just a few seconds, I've got um, a parallel lesson plan. It's but it's for the same students. It's based around the same aim, same amount of time. But instead of using test, teach, test, it's using task-based learning. So a great way of of experimenting with different approaches, um, and also of of you know developing materials for teacher training that show different approaches. So if you've got a, a group of trainee teachers, you can give them four, five, six different lesson plans, it, all based around the same objectives for the same students, but taking a different approach. So that, there you go, that's a, a great tool for planning lessons, a great prompt for planning lessons. If you wanted it to be more specific, you could even get within your prompt, you could even give it more information about your students. So for example, their, their ages and um, the, the their ages, the type of, uh, language backgrounds they have and things like that. So that's a starting point for for um, for planning your lessons. Having a lesson plan isn't everything, though. You still need to sort of develop materials, and so this is a these are a few um, prompts that you can use for developing materials. ChatGPT is very good at producing songs and poems for your classroom. So, for example, if you want to a poem about or a song about a specific topic you're doing a class on chocolate or or uh, on sport you can get it to write a poem about that if you want a specific group of of words to be included you can specify what the lexical set is and you can tell it what type of students you're working for working with you can also um you can also uh, ask it to write in the style of a specific poet as well, which I think is a really nice thing to do if you have higher level students or, or if, you're, if you're studying the works of a poet and doing something with literature, then that's very nice. Again, I'll, sh I'll show you an example of how this works to just move my toolbar. Just copy my prompt. I'll go to the chat GPT. I'm gonna start a new chat. Post that in there. Wherever I put the toolbar, it's always in the way. Okay, and I would like a poem about, I want a poem about social media in the style of William Shakespeare. So if I type that in, 
just wondering, how long would it take you to write a poem about social media in the style of William Shakespeare? Let's see how quickly ChatGPT can do it. There you go. And, and as quick as a flash, we have a poem about social media in the style of William Shakespeare. So upon the digital stage where avatars prance in realms of ether, we seek to enhance our presence known to all through cyberspace. Thus, social media binds us in its embrace, a feed of en endless scrolls where words do flow like quills of yore, yet pixels now bestow each status tweet a fleeting Snapchat tale in networks vast where every soul sets sail. So there, there, there you go. You've got a, a poem in the style of, of William Shakespeare for your students to study. If you wanted to, if you didn't like that one and you just go to this little icon here, where the, the pen is, you can press on edit and submit it again, and it will create another poem, which is totally different. Upon the stage of digital world we tread, where faces hide behind a glowing screen. And you can keep doing this, and it will keep um, generating new and different poems each time. So you can have a collection of different poems if you want to give different poems to different groups of students. And again, you could change that and, uh, and uh, have a different style of, uh, or, or a different poet to create those. But that's a great way of creating, you know, content for our students that's, that's interesting and that's specific for their interests and, and what we're studying in the lesson at the time. Um, we can also get it to, to produce story plots Often, you know, it's great to get our students doing creative writing and they love writing stories, but it can be very difficult for them to be to come up with the plot and be creative at the same time as, you know, using a second language and working with the second language. But we can use a plot template and get students to create, you know, the basic get, get students to get chat GPT to create the basic plot based around the template and then they can write the story once it's created the plot for them so you know we, this one says create a plot outline for a story about so they select the, te the topic or you can select the topic tell them the, tell it the level of the students tell it the number of characters you want to be included and then the story should be based in you can give it the settings and then it says create the plot outline in, in bullet points. So it, that, that's to stop it writing the complete story. So if you just take this prompt, you can get a plot outline for your students and then they can write the story ba based on this plot outline. And it doesn't require then quite so much of the kind of creative work. They can sort of do some of that first. You can add more detail to this prompt as well if you want, uh, you want it to be more specific. So create a, a plot outline for a story about a trip to Mars. A uh, story should be suitable for students, let's say, uh, it should include, let's limit the number of characters or characters, story should be based in the future. Okay, and if I just click that, it will then produce me a plot outline. So it's given, it's called the Red Planet Adventure, characters, Sam, a curious 10 year old boy who dreams of exploring space, uh, Maya, Dr. Patel, Rover, a friendly robotic assistant. And then it's got our basic plot outline. This is the introduction, preparations, launch and journey, arrival on Mars, discoveries and challenges, problem solving, return journey, homecoming, epilogue. Okay, that's quite a long and detailed one. We could ask it to, to be more concise with the bullet points. I can spell it. Okay, and then it's made it much more basic. So we can just give that plot outline to students and they can use that as the basis for their creative writing. So 
So that's another way to use it. Another useful uh, useful way you can use it is to create plays. You know, uh, getting plays and drama scripts for our students to do can be very difficult. You know, having finding a script that's the right has the right amount of parts that's on the right topic that's the right level that's you know suitable for our students and follows their interests can be very difficult. But using ChatGPT, using a simple template, we can get it to dr generate drama scripts for our students. So again, I've got a prompt here that you can try out, or there's a there's a few. You can have it based on a topic. So, you know, write about a, a play about a specific topic. If you're studying a specific book with your students, you can get it to write a play based around the themes of that book. And it could be based around a specific chapter if you wanted. You can specify the number of characters. And again, you can even specify the playwright if it's one that's common and well known. And again, I'll show you the, the prompt for this. I'll demonstrate the prompt. So. We go to chat GPT. Again, I'm gonna start a new chat so that we don't get lost. Type my, my prompt into there. So I want a, a, a play about, I'm gonna stick with social media. And I'm gonna say five students. And again, I'll go for the style of William Shakespeare. I can spell it. There you go. And when I press enter, it starts to write me a short play for my students. Back to. There it is. And there's the, the so it's the tweeting tempest dramatis persona. The, here's my characters: Prospero, a wise social media influence; Miranda, his daughter; Caliban, a disgruntled social media user; Ariel, a mistress, mischievous virtual assistant; and Ferdinand, a na naive young user. And there's Act One, a remote island. So it looks like this is based on the tempest. Oh, how the tempest of tweets doth rage in this vast ocean of the internet stage. Miranda, dear, dear daughter, attend to me and mark the lessons of this online sea. So there we have a, a play very much in the style of Shakespeare that our students can then start to work with, uh, rehearse and act out. If, if, for example, okay, this one's got five parts, but we've got 25 students, we want them all to do a different play, we can just click save and submit again and it will produce another one. This one's the tweets of Verona. And again, if you see these numbers here, I can flick between the two. There's my first play, there's my second play. Again, I can click on the pencil, save and submit, and it will generate a third play for me as well. And I can have, so I can have five different plays all created very quickly that my students can then work on and rehearse and perform for each other. And they don't have to watch each other doing the same play. Each play is different. So, you know, for me, that's, that's a great way of, of producing, you know, drama scripts from, that my students can work with. And otherwise that can be extremely expensive to try and buy those kinds of things and adapt them and things like that. So that's another way, great way of getting ChatGPT to create materials. Another th th nice thing about it is that it, it can understand different levels of formality and how appropriate they are. And this is something that our students often struggle with. You know, our, our students are often exposed to English through social media and, and they pick up some sort of nice, interesting, idiomatic kind of expressions, but they don't know what the register is in terms of how formal or informal they are. So we can develop materials to help our students work on levels of formality. And, you know, it will write, ChatGPT will create examples of any kind of text for you, any kind of text you want to, you want to work with, whether it's a letter, an email, uh, tweets, uh, social media updates, uh, business documents, whatever kind you want. And it will do them um, in an informal or, or formal style. So if, we, if I copy this top template again, and again, I'm going to start a new chat. You should always start a new chat with new topics so that ChatGPT doesn't get confused. So I'm going to ask it to 
write a formal email to my bank manager asking for a loan of $1,000 to buy a car. Again, I've reiterated in a formal style. So now if I ask it to produce an example letter like that, or it does a nice formal letter for me to use as for my students. So subject of the loan, loan request for car purchase, bank manager. I hope this email finds you well. I'm writing to formally request a, a bank loan, name of the bank, amount. So it's got all of the the kind of formal structure and the kind of things that you would expect to find in a formal email to ask for a bank loan. And now we can ask ChatGPT to change that. So I'm gonna ask it to make it very informal. So click, click enter. And it does, it's, it's created another email, around same kind of structure, same purpose, but in a very, using very informal language. So we, I've got loan for a ride. Hope you're doing great. So I've got this plan brewing in my mind. I could really use your help. I'm thinking of getting myself a sweet set of wheels, you know, a car. I've been eyeing a sweet deal and need a little boost financially. So it's got lots of examples of informal language. So then we can give those to our students and they can compare them and, and pick out, decide which is, is the formal language, which is informal, what the parallel expressions are and things like that. So, you know, a great way of creating materials to focus on levels of formality and register. And again, that could be anything. It doesn't have to be an email. It could be um, a business report or something like that, or anything where, where um, degrees of formality are very important. So that's you know another way we can use it. It's a great tool for creating materials for our classroom, which are, are more specific to our students' needs than what might be in the course book. Another way that we can use it is to develop ourselves and develop our own knowledge and understanding. You know, and one of the great criticisms of things like AI and Jack GPT is people are saying, well, you know, what's going to happen to uh, 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 critical thinking and you're just going to produce a, a text and, and then, you know, not really read it or anything like that. But this is a kind of program that we can get chat gpt to use to act as a some kind of socratic mentor and using this program instead of giving us information chat gpt will ask us questions so it'll ask us questions it will probe our knowledge of things and help us develop our knowledge through questioning in that using a kind of socratic mentoring technique if you see the prompt here you can copy this later it's very long it's quite long so it's like a mini computer program. And if I copy that and go to chat GPT, start a new chat, put it in there. And at the end, I just need to specify what topic I want to develop my knowledge of. And this could be, you know, it could be an aspect of teaching. It could be, I, I want to know more about task-based learning or, or project-based learning. It could be um, a, a a kind of area of knowledge if I'm teaching engineering to students and I don't know much about engineering, I could sort of find out a bit more so I have some background knowledge or something like that. And all, so all I have to do is add my kind of, my subject knowledge that I want to develop. So I, I've been working on things to do with inclusion in the classroom, so I've been using it for that. So let's begin with the topic of inclusion in education. And if I click enter, yeah, there's my prompt and it says, great, let's delve into the topic of inclusion in education. To start with, what's your understanding of the term inclusion in the, in the context of education? So it's asking me to start questioning myself and, and sort of presenting my knowledge. So it's about ensuring that all students can participate in the lesson. 
Okay. So I'm offering up my knowledge and each time it'll go, yes, that's a good starting point. In what ways do you think inclusion can be facilitated in educational settings to ensure that students can participate fully? So again, it's carrying on this, this process of asking me questions. Um, we can use different techniques in class. We can use technology. To help, and we can ensure easy access. Okay, so give some ideas there. Okay, and it tells me that I'm right. Important aspects. Let's explore the idea of different techniques further. What specific techniques or strategies do you think can be effective in promoting inclusion within the classroom environment? So it's continually digging deeper based on my, my responses. It's digging deeper into what I know and pushing me more deeply. If I get stuck, I can say, I'm not sure. Can you help me, please? And it gives me some suggestions. But then at the end, again, it keeps going back to asking me. And so it keeps um, pulling deeper and, and pushing me to dig more deeply into my, my own knowledge. So I think that's a, that's a great prompt for, for both the teachers and it could be used for students as well. Although the, the language level is higher, you'd have to put in, enter into the prompt something about the language level for the students to ensure that it adheres to a specific language level. But that's a great way of developing knowledge in a very kind of interactive way, rather than it just being sort of passive reading that's a, a knowledge that's generated through ChatGPT. So those are a few things that, that um, teachers can do. Let's have a look at some things that students can do and that can really help students. The first thing is, you know, you can get a free plugin so that students can speak to Jack GPT instead of writing to it. If they've got it on their phone, they can speak to it and listen to it anyway. But if they're working on a computer, this is a free plugin that they can use. And they can just download this and install it onto, onto their Chrome browser. And it will enable them to have voice interaction with, um, with Chat GPT. And this, this is kind of what it looks like here. You can see at the bottom here, there's a, a little toolbar and there's a yellow button and a blue button. If they, they can use these to change the language that they interact with it. So they can change it so that both are English or they could have their, they could be speaking English, getting the replies in their first language or vice versa. They can even cho choose, the choose the voice so they can decide whether it's male or female. And then they just speak to the, speak to the, the computer and, and to chat GPT and it will reply. So they can have conversations or, or they, they can, uh, they, in the example here, I've actually asked it for feedback on my pronunciation, asked it to give me feedback on my pr pronunciation. It said, certainly, yes, I can give you feedback. And then I read a text, a short text. It's a bit of an odd text. It's from the Speech Accent Archive. And I use this one because it um, contains all of the sounds of the English language. So I thought it would be a good way to sort of experiment with seeing where, what sounds it could pick up and, and what sounds it would give me feedback on. So I read that and then it gave me this feedback. It got, gave me five tips about different sounds and different ways I could improve my speaking. So, you know, um, this may not be, this may be kind of generic feedback. I'm not sure how specific this was to my voice. And a lot depends on how well the, 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 the um, speech to text engine picks up what you're saying, but it's still a good way of students getting some feedback on their pronunciation and getting some speaking practice that they can do at home. You know, they don't need to have a teacher there at the time. They can get that kind of practice. Um, they could just have a chat with it. It doesn't have to be specific um, feedback about pronunciation. They could ask it for feedback on grammar. They could ask it to help them improve their vocabulary. Um, or they can just chat to it about any subject they're interested in. Some of the other prompts that they can use with it, uh, I'll go on to role playing, you know, it's great for them to use chat GPT as a tool to practice their, their speaking during role plays. And chat GPT can um, create 
you know, unique role plays for them to do that, that develop fluency. And again, here's a, a prompt template that you can try out. You can edit the prompt play, the template if you want your, your, your role play to be different, but it says, we'll, we'll play, role play together, act as G, chat GPT's role, and then you define what chat GPT will do. You, you specify the place and context where the role play takes part, and you specify the student's role. And then you give it some rules to follow. Uh, so any kind of rules that you want it to follow during the, during the role play. One of the most important ones is to put in the level of language that you want. And then you can, you can, you can tell it what its name is and how it should start the conversation. I know this is an, an important role. Wait for me to reply before continuing. So that stops it writing the whole role play um, and, and it makes it more spont spontaneous. So here's an example. We'll role play together, act as a waiter in a sushi restaurant. I'll be the customer. Follow these rules. Be polite, be concise. We'll take turns to speak. Use English at B1 level. Wait for me to reply before continuing. And then if you understand, you introduce yourself as June and ask how you can help. So I'll just copy and paste that. Um, move my, need to move things around on my screen a bit more. I'll go to a new chat. I'll put that in. Click there. Sure, let's begin the role play. Waiter, good evening. Well, welcome to our sushi restaurant. My name is June. How may I assist you today? And again, if we were using that, that, um, that plugin that I just showed you, this would be um, reinforced with audio too, and I could speak my replies. So uh, I'll say, I'd like a table for two, please. Okay, so I'm putting in a table for two. Waiter, of course, I'll prepare a table of two for you. Follow me, please. Here's your table. May I offer you some water while you look over the menu? I'll be, I'm going to be a difficult customer and I'll say, I don't like this table. Can I have a table by your window? I'm going to put that in. Certainly, I apologize for the inconvenience. Let me find you a table by the window, please. Follow me to your new table. Here we are. Is this more to your liking? I'm going to be a really difficult customer, and I'll say, no. Waiter, I understand. Let me see if there's another table available by the window. Please bear with me for a moment. And so we can continue in this way, and it's completely spontaneous. So this is real free practice. It's not like, you know, a, a conventional scripted role plays where, you know, everything the student says is controlled, they're having to sort of respond in a very free way. And if you gave this prompt to students to take home and practice at home, each one of them would have a very different conversation with their waiter and it would be very different. If you want to see what they're doing and you want to make sure they're doing your, their homework, if you look in the top right-hand corner of the screen where my cursor is now, there's a little button there. And if I click on that, it will... It will give me a copy, a link to a copy of the the, converse, the, the role play, and I can put it in and, and I can share that. So you can check up on them, get them to share the links to the conversation or the role play that they had. And this is true with any prompt or, or any interaction that your students has with ChatGPT. You can get them to copy and share a link with it so that you can sort of check through it. And you, you could actually use those uh, role plays to, to then make activities. You know, you could pull out different interesting bits of language and get ChatGPT to, to make some worksheets for you based around those role plays. Um, the other thing is you could get uh, students to actually ask for feedback at the end of the role play and get them to, to type, ask it. Uh, to get chat GPT feedback and give them some tips on how they could have done better, what more, what vocabulary they could have used or, or different expressions. So that's a great way of getting students to sort of practice speaking and practice role play at home on their own. And then maybe they can come into class and actually do the role plays and be much more spont spontaneous and um, use much more sort of complex levels of language as well. So I think that's a, a great tool for developing speaking and things like that.
The next tool I want to show you is, is based around making reading interactive. And I think this is a really sort of strong feature of ChatGPT that it can do this, um, is, is very remarkable. And it can and what it can do is it can drop students into a story and make them part of the story um, so that they dictate the way the story develops um, by their responses. And uh, this one's um, based around the book of Harry Potter or the series Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. I'm sure you know you're, most of you have heard of it or your, your students have heard of it. How many of you have read Harry Potter? Can you type in a yes or a no? I'm reading it to my daughter at the moment, actually. She loves it. So if I put, if I put my prompt in there, what it does is it starts creating a version of the story that includes me. And so students would read through the story and then have to respond to it. And it, it starts the story at the, at the point in the story where um, the student meets the sorting hat. And it's the sorting hat that puts students into different houses and decides which houses they should be in. But in, in this prompt, it, it asks them questions to find out which houses they should be in. So it describes the scene, Dumbledore's there, Professor McGonagall, and then it, it starts to ask questions. So, ah, another young mind to sort, the hat's voice whispered into my ear. But first, I, I must know your name. What shall it be? So I can tell it my name. My name is Nick. Nick, is it the sorting? So then the sorting hat responds and the sorting hat starts to ask me questions. So it says, tell me, Nick, what quality do you value most in yourself? Is it bravery, ambition or intelligence? I'll say uh, bravery. And then it goes on to ask another question. Uh, inclined to follow one leads to the glory, leads to wisdom, that leads to power punch. So, um, an admirable quality. Now to my second question, if you were faced with a difficult choice, which path would you would be you most inclined to follow? I'll say the path of glory. Glory, okay. And then it asked me the final question, a magical creature, what ag magical creature would I like? Oh, I'd like a phoenix. Okay, and it's decided to put me into Gryffindor so I can read the next part of the story. And then it says, what would you like to do? So um, I'd like to learn some magic. Okay, and then it produces the next part of the story for me and I can read through. And I go to have a, it looks like I'm going to Professor Flickwick for a, a lesson on charms, it describes the lesson. And, and again, at the end of each thing, it always asks me a question. So that di dictates the next part of the story. So again, if we gave this prompt to students to take home to do some reading practice with, you know, each of them would have a different experience based on their answers. Then they can come into class and discuss them and talk through them together. And again, you can, you can grab a link to that if you want to and or, or get your students to grab a link to it so you can see what's happened in their stories and what kinds of interactions they've been having. Just says copy link and, and get them to share the link with you as I'm doing now through there. And um, you'd be able to see what, what kind of interactions they're having. Again, you could build materials around it if you wanted to and, and sort of develop it a bit more. If students get stuck, they can ask ChatGPT for help with vocabulary or expressions or, or translating it for them or anything like that. So, you know, again, that's a great way to get students reading. I'm running very short on time, um, but I'll just show you one more prompt and then uh, some of the, the challenges. Um, this is a prompt that you can use to actually get students uh, ChatGPT to work as a, as a homework tutor for your students. And it can create them activities and, and give them feedback on that. So often in, in the classroom, you know, we have 30 students or maybe 20 or maybe 100. We're giving them the same homework and, give, and having to mark those all um, 
but really our students need different things. But if we give students this prompt, um, ChatGPT can work as their as their homework tutor. So it just it, it, it asks it to act as a tutor and it, 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 it asks them what they want to learn. So I'm ready, please let me know what you'd like to study. I'll create activities for you. So um, I'd like to study business English collocations. So I'm a business English student. I want to improve my collocations. I tell it what, it what I want, and it starts to create activities for me. So the first one, matching activity. So I match the two parts of the collocations. Then I fill in the, the blanks with collocations. Just fill in the blanks activity. Then sentence completion. And once, you've, once I've finished the activities, I put the answers back into Ch ChatGPT, and then it will mark them for me and tell them whether I'm correct or not. And I can continue that, that as well. So it makes me a much more independent learner. I can choose what my homework is. I can work on things that are specific to me that I need. And if I want to, again, I can grab that link and I can, I can share it with my teacher to pr prove that I've actually done the work and put in the time. Or I can share it with my teacher to, so my teacher can check that ChatGPT is giving me correct homework uh, feedback on it as well. So that's a work, great way to get it um, becoming a homework tutor for students and to develop a little bit of autonomy and independent learning. So um, there's a prompt here which I won't show you, but which um, turns ChatGPT into a co-writer for your students. So they they get to they outlined the uh, plot of a, a story that they want to write and put in all the background to the story, and then they take it in turns to write paragraphs. So ChatGPT writes the first paragraph, then the student writes the next paragraph, and they continue in that way. So that's a nice way to get it working as a, as a creative writing partner for your students. Um, one thing that's really important in, in with AI is prompting and, and getting your prompting right. A lot of people um, are disappointed with things like ChatGPT because they go and, and, and talk to it and it doesn't really give them what I, they want or it gives them something quite generic. If we want to get good responses from ChatGPT, then we have to be very specific and very clear about what we, we want. And this, these are some tips for kind of, you know, putting your prompt together. Be clear and, and give all these kinds of things to it. There's an example of a bad prompt here. Um, suggest, read my text and suggest ways I can improve it. So if you wanted feedback on a text you'd written, you could ask it this and it would give you a kind of generic type of feedback. It wouldn't be great, it might be okay. But if you're more specific and you re restructure that prompt so that you include the, the type of text, the topic, who the audience is that you've written it for and how you'd like it to be improved, then when you put in your text, it will give you much more specific and constructive and useful feedback. So thinking about the way you structure your prompts and giving ChatGPT the information that it needs is really important. And if you do that, you'll get much better output from it. There is also a place where you can customize the instructions and if you, if you click on customize instructions, it looks like this. And within this, you can stipulate the way that, that ChatGPT responds to you. So you can all make it always respond at a specific level. You could put in that it always responds at a, a common European framework of re reference B1 or B2 or C3, or you could stipulate that it always talks to you like you're 10 years old or produces everything like you're a PhD student. You know, if you want it to respond to you like your Einstein, you can do that as well. Uh, you can stipulate how factual as opposed to a creative you want it to be if you're doing research and you want to make sure things are actually true. Being, being careful, being specific about what you put in there um, can really sort of help you get better responses if you're, if you're using it with a specific purpose. Um, so those are some of the opportunities. Um, I, I've, I've also put, put together a, a list of slides about challenges, which are things that I've predicted that you're, you're, you're likely to ask questions about. Um, I'll leave those and see if the questions do come up. And if they don't, um, 
then then I'll have a quick look at them. But uh, I'll stop here and I think we've just got 10 minutes left for questions. So if you have any questions, please do um, uh, I either put them into the Q&A in, in chat Q&A or um, Sylvia can handle those. I think she's been collecting questions anyway, haven't you?